Hey guys, welcome to episode 007. It's finally James Bond time. My name is Shirak Singapuri, and welcome to the next episode of Wine Wizzo. Today, I've got a very, very, very special guest who I'm super excited to host. Her name is Francesca Chachi, and she is the head winemaker of Duluth di Sesta, one of the absolute best Brunello <clears throat> wines in the whole world. She's been making wines for the last 11 years. She started when she was 28 years old, and today she's taken the winery, which is one of the first 12 Brunello wineries in that region, to what it is today. By the way, the Brunello wine is amazing. The Rosso di Montalcino is amazing. And what you must try that she doesn't publicize enough is the delicious, delicious grappa. So let me pass the ball over to Francesca Chiacci and say hello. How are you doing today, Francesca? Uh I'm very good and it's so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you very, face very to face. much. <laughs> yeah, it's been about a year. I think the last time we met was in uh, Tuscany when you hosted us. Yeah, when we, we I remember, you know, we, we appreciate a lot my grappa, you know, so yes. you, you, you were best than me, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for the grappa, for sure. I think what I remember yeah. was that, like, I think we asked you so many questions and, um, you gave such amazing answers. And when you were talking about the wines, it was that energy that I really wish that I could have recorded it, <clears throat> brought it out and shared it with more people. It was just profound, I guess, for me. So Francesca- So welcome, me. welcome to Tenuta di Sesta, you know, <laughs> welcome here. <laughs> and what does Tenuta di Sesta mean? Uh, so there are uh, uh, two uh, different uh, explanations. Mm -hmm. So sexta is uh, clearly of a you know a word uh, uh, from Roman, and uh, you know it means uh, the sixth hour of the Roman calendar, and this mean means uh, the uh, midday and means all, all, also the uh, the South exposition, and uh, in here our exposition is uh, totally at the south part of uh, Montalcino territory, mm -hmm. and uh, so this is one idea about it. And the second one is uh, that uh, in uh, um, there was bull, there was the sixth millstone milestone, milestone uh, yeah. where was the milestone um, where was built an ancient uh, an ancient church, and uh, and this milestone was uh, along a road, a ancient Etruscan road. You know, mm -hmm. so it's something very very old. You know, so you can have this option. Believe in which one do you prefer? <laughs> Nice. I, I love it. <clears throat> yes. And why did your family choose to use the word Sesta for the, the name of the winery? I have no idea. To be yeah. honest, I, I have no idea. You know, it's just Sesta, you know, in very old, uh, in very old uh, maps, uh, mm. you can, you can see, you know, the name Sesta, you know, so, and Tenuta means estate, you estate. know, so, you know, so it's something close to, to a name of the territory, you know, of our right. location, probably. Yeah. So it and, trans yeah, Sorry. and um, because I'm thinking, you know, so uh, the name this, the name Sesta is not just our estate, but it is also um, a land between two small villages, uh, Castelnuovo della Bate and Sant'Angelo in Colle. So you know, uh, on here uh, we are not alone. There are other uh, estates, you know, uh, other winemakers, you know. But Tenuta di Sesta is just us. Mm -hmm. the original one <laughs> it makes you special it's beautiful yeah yeah it's because it's uh, you know the common thing that uh, all the winemaker in here uh, have is a special microclimate mm -hmm. it's very warm you know so because uh, on the east side we have the amiata mountain on the west side we, we are exposed to the sea even if it's uh, quite far away something like 40 kilometers and in the north, we are covered by a range of hills. And so, you know, we are covered from the cold winds. So it's wow. very warm, yeah. And, and <clears> what <throat> type of soil do you, do you have in Montalcino in your area specifically that makes it so special? So um, I think that, you know, the soil, uh, even in, um, in each vineyard is very changeable, you know. So mm -hmm. um, in here, um, so our property uh, uh, are in, is a, in a, is a narrow strip of land, mm -hmm. uh, so we have different kind of, of soil. In general, it is uh, very balanced in uh, in sand, in lime, and in clay, mm -hmm. tending to be to be clay. 
uh, it is calcareous, so it's very poor, so rich in stones, and sometimes it's very rich in iron. And so in these vineyards with uh, much quantities of uh, iron, the, the soil um, can have uh, much better the, some nutrients. So this is important for us because, you know, we have sometimes during the hot summer, you know, this is uh, very important. Mm -hmm. <coughs> how is it important for you? In what way? In, sorry, in? <clears throat> in what way is the soil so important for you that it has like a high concentration of iron? Uh, the soil, you know, for me is the, the, the most important things, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, to have high quality of wine. I mean, um, for example, in the same vineyards, <coughs> mm -hmm. we, during the harvest, we pick uh, the, the grapes uh, where the soil uh, mm, changes, you know, so uh, the same kind of, of, uh, uh, of vineyards with the same kind of soil mm -hmm. are, uh, are picked uh, together, you know, because uh, they, you know, they, they, the kind of ripeness uh, comes in the same moment, mm -hmm. you know, and so for me is the first, um, is the most important uh, things, you know, that uh, make uh, different wine. <clears throat> right. And we, if we want to talk, if you don't mind, I'm just going to be jumping around yeah, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. of course. What, what of course. makes uh, the Brunello wine so, um, so grow so well in that particular region? Is it because of the soil? Is it the climate? Like, yeah, it's you know the 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 fact you know this kind of exposition that I I, I told you before for mm -hmm. Sesta, you know, works for uh, all Montalcino territory. Right. And so you know, and so you know, it's very because for the fact that um, uh, the uh, <clears throat> we are not near, we are not so near and not too far to the to the to the sea. Mm -hmm. makes our territory quite wet so this prevent a lot uh, for disease and also the, the altitude in here uh, in Sesta it is about uh, 300 meter above, above mm -hmm. level sea level and uh, you know and you know the exposition yeah and the kind of soil that uh, is so calcareous and poor you know and so you know and in here the, the Sangiovese has uh, its best expression and mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you know, the Sangiovese, it's a, a kind of um, a variety that is so sensitive. Uh, so the final uh, result depends a lot of the location where uh, he grows. Mm -hmm. um, like, like the Nebbiolo for, in Piemont for the Barbera and, in, uh, and, uh, and, Bar and Barolo, you know, so much more than other kind of, uh, of rape. Uh, so this makes you know unique uh, a Brunello. So uh, the Sangiovese is yeah. the grape that makes the Brunello wine, and you were saying it's a bit more sensitive. Yeah, I mean uh, it's a kind of variety. The Sangiovese is a kind of grape, mm -hmm. and you can find Sangiovese everywhere in Italy. You know, yes. but for example, from the Sangiovese of Puglia in the south of Italy, okay. you can uh, you can have uh, a table wine. You know, so yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, in here instead, you know, you, uh, the Sangiovese is uh, something special, and mm. but usually, you know, it's difficult to have uh, uh, to have a so good pure Sangiovese because Sangiovese is uh, uh, lazy with the uh, aroma and uh, is not that colored, you know. So usually in Chianti or in Nobile di Montepulciano, it is blended with other kind of varieties. Mm -hmm. But only in Montalcino, you can have, you know, just a pure Sangiovese, you know, so, and, you know, so good. <laughs> yeah, but what, I'm curious about this, right? Because like, um, like you were saying with Sangiovese, it grows everywhere. And Italy's like national wine is pretty much there. The Chianti, it's what it's most famous for. And it's always blended, so it's mostly like Sangiovese with something else. But with the Brunello wines, with the Montalcino wines, it's 100% Sangiovese. How do you, yeah. how, do, how is it possible to do a 100% Sangiovese that tastes so good that you don't have to put anything else to, to balance the, the flavors? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is, uh, you know, first of all, you know, is uh, like I told you, is the terroir, yeah. you know, it's, you know, yes. just, the quality just comes, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's something that is not uh, under uh, our control, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, you can, you know, improve your final result with your agriculture choices, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, and, 
And then when uh, um, crucial is absolutely the uh, right moment for the harvest time, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so to to get the, 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 the you know the, the the proper ripeness of the grape. So you know, on a hand, uh, you know, mm, it's just good. You know, is really is a territory. You know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm, I told you, you know, that I have different vineyards and uh, sometimes it is unbelievable because in one, you know, you have so high quality and mm -hmm. in another one very close, you know, the product is not, it's not bad, but you know, it's not like, it's not the same at all. Close. Actually, what I've always wanted to ask you is how did you fall in love with wine? How? Yeah. How did you fall in love with wine? In, do you mean in, in wine or making wine? Um, Okay, how about we start, so which came first? Mm, let me think. <laughs> I don't know really. I mean, uh, I like drinking, you know, but uh, uh, when I started to make, make wine, it was something different, you know, because uh, it was, uh, it became my baby, you know, yes. so everything, yeah, yeah, so, uh, how I don't know I when I because I studied agriculture at university and uh, but I wasn't really convinced about it you know because uh, I, I I really didn't know what to do in my life mm -hmm. you know so you know and so my father is tinted insisted uh, you know very you know in a soft way and uh, so I studied agriculture yes. but at the end of the university you know I was very you know worried about it because uh, I didn't really study for uh, for my future work, you know. So, um, you know, it was the trouble, you know. I was, you know, I didn't know. And and then, you know, um, my my fiance was um, uh, lived in uh, in Genova, so in the north of Italy. And so, you know, I really didn't know, you know, about my life, you know. So what I I, I thought it was okay. I have to know what I have and so I start to work there and then I'll see you know and uh, you know I, I, I followed in love <laughs> with this work so I convinced my you know my boyfriend to come here you know uh -huh. and, uh, and it was the right choice but it was like uh, a surprise for me you know so um, it's not you know it's, it's not because I'm the third generation making wine that this means that uh, it's, it's fine you know mm -hmm. Uh, so my passion, fortunately, is something something new. It's something mm -hmm. mine. I you know, it's something completely mine. And and I think that's really interesting. And I can relate to you because I come from a family business started by my grandfather. Then my father took over. And when I didn't know what I wanted to do, like your father, my father gently told me, "Study business, and then you can slowly take over." <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. And it wasn't my choice, but it was also my choice. And it wasn't something that I yeah. wanted to do, but I'm glad I did it because it gave me a lot of opportunities. And I have to say something. You're one of the few people I know who, what you study, you're actually doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a surprise to me too, you know, because uh, yeah, one of my best friends um, with whom I studied at university was very passionate, you know. In fact, mm -hmm. now is a, is a very great uh, enologist, you know. And it, I feel him like so different from me. Instead, mm -hmm. now I we are on the same level, you know. And this is great. <laughs> and what what do you think changed for you? Like, how did you get on that same level? Patience, you know. Patience. Uh, patience, yeah. Because uh, he always, you know, uh, knew what 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 was uh, his focus on his mm -hmm. goal, final goal, and I didn't, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, I think I could do many things. I don't really know uh, which one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, but this for sure is, uh, uh, you know, it is one of them, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm, you know, I'm so fine. I, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. I can tell yeah. and I can see it. And I, I'm yeah. always curious when I when I meet people who who look like they really like what they do. I want to I want to ask you what do you what do you love or what do you enjoy most about what you do? I like you know I what I really like is uh, is the thing that I'm I 
uh, I'm really good too, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I like um, when I, I, I have to choose the proper moment to, to harvest, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I go in vineyards to, to taste the, the, the grapes, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, and it's, it, it happens something that, uh, you know, usually doesn't happen to me, you know. I'm sure, so I'm sure about uh, my decision, you know. So I can stop the harvest. I can stop uh, 15 people to say no. Uh, you you haven't to harvest today, but you know, wait for my decision tomorrow maybe. Mm -hmm. And you know, I so, you know, I I like this a lot, a lot. And I'm I'm really curious when you talked about going to taste grapes for someone who's um, not done it yet. I'm really curious. How do you how do you know when you taste a grape? What do you, I guess, what do you look for? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's difficult, you know, to to explain this, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, mm, in here, for the fact that we are uh, in the south exposition of a uh, uh, Montalcino territory, we have a lot of sun. So the level of sugar, you know, uh, is always uh, fine. You know, mm -hmm. so we have sugar, you know. But so uh, when I taste uh, uh, a grape cherry, I I have to to uh, forget about the sugar, but go over, you know, with my, with my feeling. So I, I need to be more focused on the level of acidity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I have to, you know, taste very well at the end the, the skin of the grape and to see if, uh, you know, uh, at the end, how is uh, at the end my taste. So if uh, there's something that make uh, too wet uh, my mouth, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, and you know this. This is uh, what I, you know, you know. When you know that uh, everything is balanced, you know, mm. and uh, and the thing that uh, is um, is when it's perfect uh, is uh, I don't know how to explain. This is very difficult to talk. Of course, about. you know, is uh, is like uh, is like uh, with an apple. You know, when you 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 eat uh, an apple and you you listen this. Uh, uh, sound, yeah. you know, yes. yeah, yeah. So when you have also this, you know, is the best thing, you know, that you can have, mm. you know, and yeah. It, yeah. it sounds amazing. It's like a whole experience. Like you, you kind of, and it, it's cool what you talk about how it's difficult to explain because I can kind of understand it's, it's really about that feeling and connecting to it. Right. Yeah. 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 But you know, but, but you feel it, you know, but, yeah. uh, yeah, but you feel it, you know, and mm. uh, and when you and sometimes it's difficult to say what is really wrong, but you know that you have to wait or you have uh, to harvest, you mm. know, immediately, immediately, you know. So, right. uh, but you know, it's uh, I like it, I like it, you know. But you know, mm, I like it, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and what what is your your favorite part about the winemaking process? Uh, you mean in the cellar? Which one do you mean? Um, let's say from, from planting the grapes to picking the grapes to making the wine, the, do you have a part that you, that you enjoy most? I like pruning. I like pruning. You know, because That's I, interesting. Uh, yeah, because I, you know, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a, a cellar person, you know, yes. so I don't like to stay in the cellar. In mm -hmm. fact, my brother is the supervisor of the cellar. Mm -hmm. He said I like to to stay outside, you know. So I like uh, uh, mm, I like do pruning, you know. Mm -hmm. I like I like it, you know. I, it's something that I like to do. Uh, and yeah, and then you know everything when when you when you see the grapes the, the grapes on the vine. You know, I like all the step, you know, because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you are waiting, like, like when you cook something, you know, you, you like everything because uh, you see, you know, that any, your choice has a result, you know, yes. so, yeah. It's, it's interesting, like you compare it to cooking, right? It's like from the chopping of the vegetables, the sauteing to the putting the spices, every little part has a, has a big role to play and influences the, the end result that you're going to experience. Yeah, and it is, you know, what uh, um, made me crazy about, uh, about my work, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, when I started, everything uh, seemed to be very boring, you know, yeah. because, uh, you know, in, for, 
uh, your book, you know, everything is always the same every year. Mm -hmm. It's is not, absolutely. Every vintage, you know, is uh, completely different from the other, you mm -hmm. know, so, you know, it's just your experience that helps you in, uh, in thinking something different or the new solution, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I can remember one vintage, you know, like another one. It's you know? always been different. And just, yeah. I'm really curious about this, right? But is there, is there a pattern that regularly happens with every vintage, like certain things that always stay the same and certain things that are always different with every vintage? Uh, I, I, uh, I don't, I, I don't think so because, uh, um, you know, because then you know uh, you, you can you uh, you can make your agriculture choices, but mm -hmm. then you have a different uh, weather. You know, so if if you know mm, it's completely different, you know your vineyard uh, will be completely different. So much more vigorous, for example. You know, so no, no, there's you know everything. Fortunately, you know, is uh, something. Uh, uh, different because yeah. everything is changing right your your ground is changing exactly. the grapes are changing this the weather is changing yeah. so it's always wow that's really interesting and how do you yeah i guess my next question would be which i'm really curious about is how do you manage this change you know you just go for it you know <laughs> you know you know it's uh you know yeah it, like i told you it's your experience you know so mm. because you you know you uh, you are used to to think about it, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, for example, now when I now I I just went to to decide uh, where to have a new planting, and uh, you know, so we, we we could choose between two different uh, hills, mm -hmm. side of hills, and I don't know why I prefer one part instead of the uh, instead of the other part, mm -hmm. you know. So it was, uh, you know, something coming from my, my brain, but coming from my, my belly, you know? Yes. And uh, so I called uh, my, my colleague, you know, who helped us, you know, in uh, this kind of choices. And he had the same feeling, but maybe he could uh, um, say something more, you know, but mm -hmm. confirm my, my first choice, you know? So, you know, everything like that, like in life, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's very interesting. Um... From from what I gather from what you're saying, it's 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 cool that you use a lot of. Um, I, if, if I'm saying the wrong word, forgive me, but it's an intuition. Like you you go with that feeling and and you just kind of yeah, this is the way it is. Yeah, 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 and yeah, and most most yeah, usually you know it is right. You yes. Know, when uh, yeah, yeah. This is a, is a discover. It's a discover in uh, for everything. I, I totally agree with you as well. Like uh, following that um, that gut feeling that yeah, you know when yeah, you come feeling, from it. Feeling. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And have yeah, you always yeah. been like that? Uh, I think the, yes, but now I'm more aware of my feelings. You know, mm -hmm. so now I trust much more than in the past mm -hmm. of my feelings because uh, you know sometimes even to be uh, very sensitive is uh, considered in our culture a weakness instead mm -hmm. now i know that it's a uh, it's, it's strength you know so yeah yeah mm, that's yeah. interesting it's it's actually the the perfect segue into what i was going to ask next um if you don't mind me asking, I'm really curious, but as a, as a woman making wine in Tuscany, I guess I could be wrong, but it's not so common. Uh, what are, what are some of the challenges that you face? Uh, you mean how, uh, which one difficulties I could yeah. find? You yes. Mean, yeah. It, yeah. It was so difficult, you know, because when I finished my university, you yes. Know, so I, I, I was focused on, uh, on the plant mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I was the, the daughter of the boss. Yes. I studied, you know, and I, I, I didn't have any experience. So it was terrible, <laughs> you know, nobody li listened to me, you know. And so what I did, uh, it was uh, very difficult because uh, I, I started to work with other people. So to listen, people with uh, old experience. Mm -hmm. And then I, and then you know I used my uh, my studies to, to to make some changes, you know, 
And so I discuss with people, you know, so it was hard. Now it isn't because I, you know, I'm more, you know, sure about myself mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I don't mind if uh, somebody don't, is not agree with me, you know, mm -hmm. so, but it, it was very hard. Yeah. Can you, can you, would you be able to give an example or two that, that some of the challenges that you faced? Uh, for example, for example, uh, um, uh, now because uh, um, in the last ten years, in fact, we mm -hmm. we, uh, we changed the canopy management of mm -hmm. the vines. Uh, so because uh, now we have uh, uh, some some very hot summer, mm -hmm. much more than in the past. So now we try to be to to keep more covered the um, the grapes from uh, from the sun. Mm -hmm. So we. Uh, so we uh, keep the leaves un under uh, over over the grapes, and we remove just uh, uh, the leaves uh, under the grapes. You know, mm -hmm. and or this is, is this is an example. Another one is that we we did uh, a very uh, strong grape selection mm -hmm. uh, when the when the uh, when the grapes uh, change colors, and uh, and you know you have to convince people to. You know, to remove some healthy bunches <laughs> from the vines, you know, mm -hmm. and people could understand. But this is important for two reasons. One mm -hmm. is that uh, you can the grape can have uh, a better ripeness, and you can pre prevent disease. You mm -hmm. know, but people really can't understand. You know, they you know they were used to do in that way, and you know. <laughs> and how did but, you change their minds? I'm curious. Uh, at the beginning, discussing, yes. you know, and then, and then convincing also, uh, also my, my, my brother, involving mm -hmm. my brother and my father in this kind of changes. So, mm -hmm. you know, and so when they didn't listen to me, they, they could, you know, listen to my father, you know, <laughs> the real boss of yes. the military system, <laughs> you know, so, and then also with the, the final result, you know, uh, when, you know, they could see how... Yes much more uh, tasty was the grapes mm. at the end, uh, you know, mm -hmm. of the season. Oh, that's perfect. That's really cool. I, I like how you, it, it's amazing. I guess when you, when you show that you're bright and that you're confident, and then once you prove yourself, it gets much easier as well. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's something that, you know, people can feel, you know, mm. when you are scared about some, something, yes. you know, you, you feel it, it is in the air, you know, so... If you're not scared, you know, you will just go for it. You know? Yes, that's perfect. I'm going to quote you on that one, by the way. It's, it's, I love it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Francesca, I, it does. I, I believe it so as well. And what I wanted to ask you next was actually a little bit about the Brunello wines, which you do. Actually, before I ask you about the Brunello wines, I'm curious. Out of all the wines that you make, do you have one that you love more than others? I know it's a difficult I, question. Yeah, I know, I know, because sometimes people uh, ask me for this. Yes. I don't know because I uh, I can say you that the 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I, it was uh, something perfect, you know, because uh, yes. I really had the the feeling when I was in vineyard that everything was perfect mm -hmm. because we had uh, you know the perfect quantity of sun of yes. rainfalls. You know, and and it was you know it's, uh, every time every winter every yeah every year is not is not easy you know to mm -hmm. harvest and make decisions. It's that it was easy you know and you know you it just happened you know we just harvest everything was uh, good Perfect. everywhere just finishing time you know it, wow <laughs> you know so yes. I yeah this is something that I can you know I can't forget yeah. yeah. And then for the one, you know, I love all my babies, you know, it's difficult, uh, you know, I can, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I can't, I can't choose, I can't mm -hmm. choose, I can't choose. That, that's fair enough. And uh, what I wanted to ask you was a little bit about the, the Brunello wine, for example. Um, I'm curious, what does it mean to you personally? I, you know, for me is, uh, you know, I think to be lucky because, uh, Brunello wine is a kind of wine uh, interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I because uh, <clears throat> the, in my opinion, it is a kind of wine complex and elegant, mm -hmm. and so you know, uh, 
I'm very lucky because uh, um, it's a kind, you know, it, um, when you drink a Brunello, you know, you, you can share something special with other people, you know, and, uh, and when you squirrel your wine in your glass, every time you have a different uh, feeling, you know, in, uh, in, the, in the aroma and in the taste. So, you know, it's something special, you know, so I'm, I feel very lucky, you know, to have this opportunity to work mm -hmm. well in vineyards and to have, you know, this kind of uh, result, you know, is fantastic. Yeah, it is. And I feel Brunello is such an amazing wine. And, but yet I feel there's a big majority of people who don't really understand it. So I would like to ask you for someone who's maybe new to Brunello and they want to learn a bit more, how would you suggest drinking it? What to maybe what to look for or how to create an experience? So first of all, you, you have to, um, uh, to open your bottle in advance at mm -hmm. least at least one hour one hour but it's not really enough if yes. you really want to understand it you know mm -hmm. uh, and then you have to to be patient and to uh, to have your glass to squirrel to you know to um, uh, to smell it uh, mm -hmm. and try to think you know you felt you have to um, to be pat patient for uh, uh, for having a uh, um, to judge it, you mm -hmm. know, to judge it, because you know, elegance uh, in general for me is something not, you know, that uh, that mm. powerful, you know, it's uh, it's something different, you know, um, mm. it's something complex, is you know, so mm, so so open before your bottle, be patient, and uh, you know, and 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 wait for finish your bottle because uh, you know it's improved a lot in timing you know so uh, at the end of your dinner it will be so much better that, than at the beginning for mm -hmm. example you know so uh, and try and try and try again you know sometimes how many times you you don't like something mm -hmm. but when you you try more time at the end you know you, you like so much you, un you understand something you know mm -hmm. so i understand yeah. i used to hate broccoli as a kid and today i love it it's my favorite vegetable <laughs> yeah you know yeah. it's you know i know be, you need to be open-minded you know yes <laughs> every time <laughs> i'm curious yeah that's really awesome i love it and what about food pairing suggestions like what is your favorite thing to eat when you're drinking a brunella for you personally yeah uh, for me personally you know i uh I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I'm not a vegetarian, so wild boar, you yes. know, you know, I love wild boar and uh, this is pairs so well with, uh, with Brunello and, mm -hmm. and seasonal cheese too, you know, yes. so, or bistecca la Fiorentina and oh, yeah, nice. maybe my first choices can be bistecca la Fiorentina. Yeah. Nice. So something very sure. meaty, very earthy. Yeah, because you know, you, you know, when you eat something fat, mm -hmm. the tannins, um, you know, uh, balance uh, this, uh, uh, this taste, uh, you mm -hmm. know, so it's perfect. It's interesting. And how, how do they do that, if you don't mind me asking? How do the tannins balance the fat? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but, okay. but, but it they, just da, works. they do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm curious. I thought maybe we could get something in. <laughs> Fantastic! It's magic. It's ma something magic happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I I know what you mean. I think the first time Sandra was trying to explain the Brunello to me was with steak as well, and I didn't quite understand. And he's like, "Just put it in your mouth." I was like, "Okay," and then he's like, "No, take a sip of the wine." I was like, "Okay," and he's like, "Wait for it," and I was like, "Oh, why is it doing that?" Yeah. And it was interesting yeah. because it really yeah. felt like the wine was giving the. The, the meat a massage and just gently releasing the fats and it just kind of spread out in your mouth and just uh, in a in a very strange way it feel like it made a baby in my mouth it was just delicious yeah yeah, yeah. and and then it's a kind of wine that uh, don't make you tired in your drinking you know mm -hmm. you, you can like for the rosso for me as well mm. you know you, you can finish a bottle you know because uh you know some is not heavy it's, it's not easy. even if you know yeah is they are drinkable even for the Brunello, mm -hmm. you know, I and, think and so. What is the biggest difference between the, the Brunello and the Rosso de Montalcino? 
the first different uh, starts in Vinyas yeah. for as for everything you know so uh, the rosso is made with uh, the younger grapes from mm -hmm. younger vineyards um, and then it's different uh, the the kind of aging that you have uh, in uh, your cellar mm -hmm. because we it, the rosso is sold just one year after the harvest uh, and it stays uh, six months six months in uh, in in oak. Mm -hmm. Instead, Brunello uh, stay has stay in oak for a mi minimum two years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, two years and up, depending on uh, on the weather mm -hmm. of yeah of that vintage. You know, so you know with the different aging, you know, it's uh, you know it's totally it's different, different wines. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah, I mean, they are similar because they have uh, the same style, so mm -hmm. because they are made with a pure Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Brunello is uh, everything more, you know. So, so the Rosso, for me, is uh, much more easier, you know, also mm -hmm. to be appreciated, you know. Uh, so with Brunello, you have to be, to be already confident with the Sangiovese grape, maybe, mm -hmm. something like that. Nice. And sorry, Francesca, to be, I want to be respectful of your time. Do you have maybe another 10, 15 minutes or yeah, of course. my stretching? Yeah, okay. I'm, yeah. Okay, great. I wanted to ask you <clears throat> in your personal opinion, what makes a good Brunello wine? Uh, you know, it's, uh, mm, you, you mean uh, te techniques? Uh, like maybe the, not techniques, you... but like, how do you, if you want to explain what, the techniques, yeah, what makes yeah. a good Brunello wine? Um, for me, you know, yes. after the, the, the territory, you know, that, uh, mm. you know, is not under my control, are your agronomical techniques that uh, yes. are mostly, you know, mm -hmm. how quantities of grapes you want to keep on the plant mm -hmm. and, uh, and the, proper, um, the proper moment uh, to harvest the grape. For me, mm -hmm. these are the most, you know, uh, important things, mm -hmm. you know, that you can, yeah, for the uh, final result. And in terms of uh, when you taste the Brunello, <clears throat> what, what makes a good Brunello in terms of flavor? Because this is much more, yeah, yes. difficult for me to explain because, you know, it's uh, when, for example, when I taste uh, uh, my Brunello and I'm very satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. In just one sip, I have uh, all the components <clears throat> that uh, I really want. So it must be, first of all, very defined, very straight, you know. Mm. Um, and you must have uh, a good concentration, a good, uh, uh, a good um, uh, aroma, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and also how you say persistent, you know, mm. and you know. A good taste. Easy after going down. In mm -hmm. here, yeah. yeah, and everything must be very, very balanced. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, I don't like when, you know, um, when uh, <clears throat> the wood to overpower the taste of the, uh, of, um, of the uh, Sangiovese grapes. This for me, for every kind of wine, but is something personal. Mm -hmm. So I really want to recognize the personality of the grapes that I'm drinking, you know. This is something, you know, for me, very, very important, you know, so mm. for Brunello and other wines. Mm. That's perfect. Yeah. And what I've always been wanting to ask you, maybe I asked you last year as well, but I, I love Slavonian oak. It's one of my favorite ways to age wines. And why do you guys in particular use Slavonian oak instead of maybe French barrique or something else? So, yeah, um, this is what make my wine traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, um, as I told you now, you know I don't want to taste the the, the taste of the of the wood when mm -hmm. I'm drinking a Brunello, and the Lavonian oak is a kind of uh, wood that is very compact, is very hard, and for this reason, it releases uh, all its component uh, very slowly, mm -hmm. and so it, you know, and this is uh, perfect for a kind of wine like Brunello that uh, require a long aging in the oak. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it also reason. doesn't change the wine too much. It helps to retain it. Yeah. Exactly. The neutrality. But neutral. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is, uh, you know, the in Slovenia, you yeah. know, uh, you can have uh, some cold winter. And so, you know, the, the, this food, you know, uh, mm. is very compact. This is mm. the reason. 
Okay, that's cool. Actually, I, I never knew that. that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, you have to know everything when you like something. Yes, I agree. It's, and it's, it's, I feel like it's like a rabbit hole. I don't know if you know Alice in Wonderland. No, no, but I do. I do. Yes. You suggested. Yeah. Alice in Wonderland. It's like when she's chasing the rabbit and when the rabbit goes in and she chases the rabbit and it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. That's what we mean when we say okay. down the okay, rabbit hole yeah. and it's just like wine or anything that you're passionate about. The more you learn, the more you want to know and the deeper you go and it's just endless. Yeah. To go to the hurt and that I quote it. The, pardon me? Yeah, because it was Italian. How yeah. do you say that to again? To, uh, andare al cuore. To go for the heart, to uh, to go to the heart of the thing. You know? Yes, andare yeah. a cuore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Beautiful, andare a cuore. That's amazing. I love this. Yeah. All right. So we we covered quite a few topics. I'm just going to have a quick look to check if I missed anything. Ah, of course, I've got maybe just a few last questions to wrap up, and one of them is, of course, is uh, how do you make great grappa? Yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, like a producer, the two uh, most important things are to produce high quality of grapes, mm -hmm. of course. And uh, the second one is to crush very softly the, the grape. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is what I can okay. do. He's starving. It's the, lunch, it's the lunch time, you know, he's starving. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll try to keep it really quick. Just two last questions. Okay, three, I promise. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so you were saying so, uh, the that, grappa. Yeah, so that um, during the um, during the uh, distillation, mm -hmm. so you have to keep the central part of the of this process. You mm -hmm. have to avoid the first part, the head part, and the tail part, and you mm -hmm. maintain the heart, even yes. in this case. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. All yeah. right. So I, I want to be really respectful of your time and try to keep it a bit condensed. I just have three last questions. Uh, the first one is, what makes you happy? Good, re good people relationship. <laughs> this fantastic. is for sure. Yeah, yeah. And what about, um, and you can answer this next question any way you like, but if I were to ask you, what do you believe in? How would you answer that? The first uh, thing that comes up. Uh, be loyal. Be loyal to yourself and to others. Well, wow. that's fantastic. I think so, you know. Yeah. It's I, very connected with, the, with, the, with the, the first answer, you know. But I really believe in it. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's a secret. And if you had a message that you can send out to millions of people out there, what would you say? Uh, many things <laughs> that I learned. <laughs> so yeah, maybe the first one is uh, feel, feel to be aware, you know, of uh, uh, of what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Be competent because of this make uh, your life uh, much more interesting and make you yourself more interesting. Mm -hmm. And and don't be scared, you know. And don't be scared. Just go for it, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, these three things. Well, I think that's that's the the most perfect thing I've heard, and it's really good <laughs> advice. Really, well, thank you very very much, Francesca, for your time. I really appreciate it. And if thank anybody, you so much. my pleasure. And if anybody wanted to find you, how can they find you, or if they wanted to get in touch? So, uh, like Francesca Chachi, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on Facebook, you know, okay. uh, because I'm not a fanatic of this stuff. That's but, good. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sorry about that, you know. No, no, it's good. Uh, you know, I have to, you know, to, to keep my energy, you know, yes. for, uh, you know, people like her. Yes. But, uh, you know, uh, but like Tenuta di Sesta, I'm, you know, uh, I have a website. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I will be on, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, mm -hmm. you can write me by email and, you know, it, it will be my pleasure, you know. So Tenuta di Sesta, it's me, you know, so you'll be welcome anytime. You Fantastic. especially, I, I really, I really would like to, to see you again. 
here or you know around the world you never know really you never know and you it would be know. my great pleasure to yes to have another glass of yeah. grappa and some brunello of course yeah of course yeah fantastic i, I i'll wait i'll wait for it you know <laughs> so you know i'm waiting for you <laughs> and i'm gonna hold you to this all right i'm gonna remember this <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So guys, I just want to say thank you very much for watching this show. It's been one of my absolute favorite episodes. And if you want to reach out and get to know a little bit more about Brunella wines, to learn a little bit more about how they work, how to drink them. Also, Tinuta Sesta is the place to be and is the wines to drink. Please enjoy them. And for everything else, please look below in the show notes. All the information is right there. So thank you once again, Francesca. And Bye. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao.